indicators and in order to do so I'm going to present the results of the last four studies that we performed in the Department of Human Evolution the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology. So the first evidence that uh, there is a relationship between the zinc isotope composition of the body of animals of humans and the diet uh, has been demonstrated by a team from Belgium, from the University of Ghent, and they analyzed uh, human blood from vegetarians and omnivores, and so they analyzed the zinc isotope composition, and they showed that for the six vegetarians that they analyzed, the zinc isotope composition were higher than for the six omnivores. <coughs> and later on, this team showed that with more samples that this trend is actually <coughs> systematic. So you have isotope differences between vegetarians and uh, omnivores for zinc. And in this study, they also analyzed uh, plant and animal products, and they demonstrated that plants indeed have higher zinc isotope composition compared to animal products, which is consistent with the fact that the omnivores, uh, which consume meat, uh, they have lower zinc isotope composition in their blood. And so our idea was to check if this dietary trend could be recorded in the biopetite of the cues or the pulse, uh, so that we could use zinc isotopes to trace the trophic level when the collagen is not preserved, for example. And in order to do so, we decided to analyze uh, food web from Kenya, uh, from the site of Kubifora, and we took a very small geographical range in order to avoid any influence of the environment and just focusing on the effect uh, of the diet. And so we compared the isotope composition of herbivores and carnivores, and you can see the results on this graph, where in green you have the zinc isotope composition of the herbivores, the browsers, and the grazers. And in red, you have the carnivores. And you can see again that the meat feeder, they exhibit lower zinc isotope composition than the plant feeders. We have one ex exception though, the hyenas that are here. They exhibit isotope composition in between the herbivores and the carnivores. But it actually makes sense because the hyenas, we eat a huge amount of bones and these bones have higher zinc isotope composition than the muscles, so the meat, basically. So we think that this is the explanation why the hyenas will have intermediate isotope composition between the herbivores and the other carnivores. In this study, we also analyzed uh, the dental level of these animals, the data that I first showed were uh, for the bones, and we saw similar trends uh, we only saw the fact that we had a, a bigger overlap between herbivores and carnivores in teeth uh, compared to bones, but uh, still the same trend. We've also analyzed some um, marine mammals from another site, or uh, uh, from uh, the site of Little Comari Island, this time an archaeological site, and uh, we analyzed the bones of uh, polar bear seals and uh, walruses. And you can see the results here for zinc, but also for nitrogen isotopes. And what we could see is that uh, we had a trend between the nitrogen and zinc isotope composition for these uh, marine mammals that are in blue, especially for the seals and the polar bears, but the walruses, which are here, are falling out of this correlation, and it could be explained by the fact that, we, that uh, they will migrate during the year, whereas the other animals are year-round residents. So the zinc isotope composition could be controlled by the diet, but maybe also the local isotopic composition can impact the one of the whole food web. So which could be a problem if we have a high mobility of uh, human population, if you really want to apply it to 
for tracing um, human diet. And so we tried to understand this a bit better with another study, this time on human dental enamel. And we worked on archaeological and modern samples. So we analyzed uh, some uh, population from the French Alps. Uh, so from just one site, uh, from the 17th and 18th century. So it's in a dark green here. Then we analyzed a collection of skulls uh, from the 19th century coming from different areas of France that are represented here in dark green on the map. And uh, modern teeth, like wisdom teeth, all of them are wisdom teeth actually. Uh, so from also from different locations. And what we saw is that we had similar ranges between the archaeological population which was coming from just one site and the, the collection of skulls coming from different places in France. Uh, however, the modern samples, they were exhibiting much lower zinc isotope composition. So what it would mean is that maybe the impact of the local environment is not that strong, because when we have like uh, this collection of skulls, the, the range of variation is not bigger. Uh, but we have this trend with a very different isotope composition for the modern samples. So two possibilities. Maybe it's like the, the zinc produced by the industry that contaminated the environment and is now integrated to our food and would have a different isotope signature. Or maybe, based on the result that we got on the food webs, it's a signature of the increase of the trophic level of the French population during the 20th century, which is documented, but it's like here a strong difference. Uh, so maybe more consumption of high trophic level fish, which would, uh, which is expected to really decrease the zinc isotope composition, and which actually makes sense because all of the other individuals pre-industrial were uh, inland individuals. No one was coastal, so the access to fish was limited and it has been documented as inexistent for uh, the first population. So we tried to answer this question by analyzing the fourth uh, population, this time uh, so contemporaneous to the one of the, the Alps, so 17th, 18th century, but this time with a documented uh, fish consumption, so the population of Rennes in Brittany, um, and we had uh, noble people, monks, that were eating fish on a regular basis and also for uh, people. Um, so we conducted a multi-isotopic study. Um, so doing first sulfur, carbon and nitrogen isotopes on the bones to really check if people were eating fish. And the answer is yes, everyone. Um, and we also uh, control for the mobility of this individual by uh, analyzing the strontium isotope composition of their teeth. And in order to know the local range, uh, we uh, checked what were the values of the Iran database that has been created a uh, couple of years ago in order to, uh, uh, to produce the, the ranges of strontium for, uh, for the entire France, uh, and we also analyzed uh, the local animals found on the site to check whether the, the values were matching with the people buried on the site. So the source of values that we obtained are reported here. In gray, you have the range corresponding to the animals, we, and uh, the colors are corresponding to the one on the, the map. And so we can see with the, the dark uh, arrow, you can see the, the emplacement of this city. And we can see that the animal range match the, the local uh, isotope values. Uh, and that most of the human buried on this site also fall into this range. But not all of them, as you can see, we have some uh, isotope composition which could correspond to the north of Brittany or uh, to other places in France, more inland. And based on the sulfur uh, isotope composition of their bones, it would um, be likely that they actually come from uh, inland area and were not coastal. Uh, 
But here are the difficulties that we analyze for source financing, the T's, so childhood signature, and uh, the other isotopes, we analyze them in bones, so adult fold signature, but we are checking that on the T's currently as well with the dentin. So we have two groups, the locals, the non-locals, and if we look at the zinc isotope composition now and compare them to the other results that we got before and that I presented, you can see here uh, the zinc isotope composition for the, the animals found on the site, so falling in the range of the animals that we analyzed uh, in Kenya, so which is encouraging because they like, very different environments, but the, the zinc isotope composition for similar diets are matching, so this is quite encouraging. Uh, here, so. Here we, you, we have the two inland populations that we analyzed in the first study, and here you can ha have the non-local individuals that we interpreted as a, as an inland population as well. And if we look at the local individuals of Brittany that uh, are supposed to eat a lot of fish, we can see that the zinc isotope composition of their teeth is close to the one of the modern population. So we think that with the zinc, we really see uh, this increase of the animal product consumption and more likely the fish consumption. We also try to see uh, if we have differences between social status because we have different burial location in the covent uh, where we got the samples from. Uh, so we have the church with the fire and the chapels where we are supposed to analyze the noble people and for example, we have four individuals in the external part of the church and also probably buried in the cloister. And uh, so you have here this um, uh, isotope signature for zinc and also nitrogen isotope. You can see that most of the individuals have the same isotope signature except some um, people buried outside of the coven, so maybe the poorest individuals. However, it's difficult to interpret this as a, a differences between social status because most of the individuals were actually individuals that were not locals. So we maybe have more signature of the geographical origin related to the fish consumption than uh, really something related to the social status. So as a conclusion, uh, zinc isotopes, they can be analyzed in bioappetite the value decreased uh, with the trophic level, and uh, we've shown uh, that uh, we are likely to make the distinction between fiscal universe and individuals who do not eat fish with the zinc isotope composition. And in blood, it has been shown that we can distinguish omnivores and lacto ovo vegetarian diets. So in the future, we're going to try to characterize uh, more, um, uh, more archaeological population in order to uh, really see uh, how we can differenti differentiate new type of diets. So thank you for your attention.